problem i hjärnan. The Nobel Assembly at Karolinska Institute has today decided to award the 2014 Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine with one half to John O'Keefe and the other half jointly to Maybrit Moser and Edvard Moser for their discoveries of cells that constitute a positioning system in the brain. Die Nobelversammlung am Karolinska Institut hat heute beschlossen, den Nobelpreis für Physiologie oder Medizin des Jahres 2014 zur Hälfte an John O'Keefe und zur Hälfte gemeinsam an Maybrit Moser und Edward Moser für ihre Entdeckungen von Zellen, die ein Positionierungssystem in Gehirn bilden, zu verleihen. <lacht> L'Assemblée Nobel de l'Institut Karolinska a décidé ce jour d'attribuer le prix Nobel de physiologie ou médecine 2014 pour moitié à John O'Keefe et pour moitié conjointement à Maybrit Moser et Edward Moser pour leur découverte de cellules qui constituent un système de positionnement dans le cerveau. Nobelevska assembléja pri Karolinskom institutu rešila se vodnja pri sudič. Nobelevsku premiju po fiziologiji ili medicine odnu palavino John O'Keefe i vtorujo palavino ravno Maybrit Moser i Edvard Moser za odkritja klietok, katorje sastavljajo pozicionuju sistemu v glavnom mozge. Thank you. Uh, that was the announcement. I would like now to introduce our expert panel here. In the middle is Professor Julian Seerath, Professor of Physiology and Chair of the Nobel Committee. And to her right is <coughs> Professor Hans Forspey, an expert in clinical neuroscience. And next to me here, Professor Ole Keen, who is a professor of neuroscience. And in the uh, hall we also have Professors Agneta Norberg and Torkel Klingberg, who are members of the Nobel Assembly and experts in the field. Now, um, Ole Keen will uh, give a brief introduction to you about the laureates and their discoveries, and then we'll be happy to take questions. Ole. Thank you. Good morning. So, here is this year's Nobel laureates in physiology or medicine. On the left is John O'Keefe, who is a professor at University College in London. And in the middle is Margaret Moser, who is professor at Norwegian University of Science and Technology, Trondheim, Norway. And on the right is her husband and co-laureate, Edward Moser, who is also a professor in Trondheim. So this year's Nobel laureates have discovered key aspects of an advanced positioning system in the brain, an inner GPS, that makes it possible to know where we are and find our way. The abilities to know where we are and find our way are essential to our existence. For example, how can we know we are in a square in front of the concert hall in Stockholm. And how can we know, how can we find our way from the concert hall to another place in the city? For example, the city hall. And how can we store this information so we can find our way the next time we take the same path? These abilities are governed by activity in the brain. But where in the brain is the positioning system located that allows to perform these tasks? And how can the brain compute such complex intellectual functions? The work by the Nobel laureates has given us answers to these questions. John O'Keefe discovered the first component in this positioning system. He was really fascinated about how the brain can create behaviors. 
And in the late 1960s, he addressed this problem by recording nerve, ac nerve activity in freely moving rats. He recorded from an area in the brain called hippocampus, which is shown here in orange. And much to his surprise, he found in hippocampus nerve cells that were only active when that rat was in a certain position in the environment. His findings are shown in this animation where the rat is moving in a white box and you can follow the path of the, the rat by looking at the gray trace and you can see whenever the rat is in this position there is activity in the cell in hippocampus here shown by the orange dot. So O'Keefe called these cells place cells because a cell was only active in a certain position, in a certain place in the environment. Different place cells in the hippocampus are active in different places, here indicated by the different colors of cells uh, in the hippocampus. And O'Keefe therefore concluded that the activity of these cells create an inner map of the environment. The same combination of place cells was active when the rat visited the same environment, but if it visited a new environment, a new combination of place cells would be active. O'Keefe therefore concluded that the place cells in hippocampus generate many inner maps of the environment, which gives us information about where we are and how we can recognize new environments. O'Keefe's discoveries of place cells showed that specialized nerve cells can compute abstract higher brain functions. His finding had dramatic impact on the study of how the brain creates behavior. More than 30 years after O'Keefe's original discovery of place cells, Maybrit Moser and Edward Moser found another component in the positioning system. They were recording from cells in the anterior cortex, which is strongly connected to hippocampus, and they discovered a complete new type of nerve, nerve cell activity. A certain type of nerve cells in the anterior <coughs> cortex were active not in one place, but in many places in the environment, here shown by the blue dots. Strikingly, when the Moses drew a lines between the places in the environment where the cell was active, they discovered that their activity pattern looked like a hexagonal grid. They therefore called these cells grid cells. Different grid cells build up uh, uh, the, the, the pattern of the grid cells is slightly shifted in environment so that the hexagonal cover the entire environment. So activity in many grid cells therefore provide the brain with a coordinate system that divide the environment into longitudes and latitudes that allow us to keep track on how far we are from a starting point and the turning point. The discovery by Maybrit Moser and Edward Moser of the grid cells showed that the brain can create a mental representation of a coordinate system that can be used for navigation in the external world. The next slide summarizes their findings showing the grid cells in the anterior cortex here in blue and the place cells in the hippocampus in, um, in yellow. These two uh, the structures are connected, so you have a coordinate system in the interval cortex and a map in, in um, the hippocampus. Grid cells, together with other cells of the interval cortex, form a connected circuitry with place cells in hippocampus. This nerve cell network constitutes a comprehensive positioning system and inner GPS in the brain.
Recent works, work in humans have shown that humans also have place-like cells in hippocampus and grid-like cells in interrhinal cortex. So these findings suggest that we possess a positioning system similar to one found in rats. So the discoveries by the Nobel laureates provided a paradigm shift in our understanding of how groups of specialized nerve cells work together to execute higher brain functions. The work has opened new avenues for studying how cognitive processes are integrated and computed by the brain. Thank you very much for your attention. And now we're ready to take questions, Swedish or English, svenska eller engelska. Hjärnans egen GPS. Vem vill börja? You're all stunned. But you have to admit it's a fantastic set of discoveries. We're really excited. Please. En gång till. Hur forskningen kommer människor till godo? Uh, Jolene, would you like to? Hans, okay. Hans kan börja. Uh, om du börjar med till godo, är det, hur kommer det människan till godo? Så det Ole visade att vi har samma typer av nervceller i människans hjärna. Gridliknande och platsliknande nervceller. Och eh, vi vet att de finns i ett område i hjärnan som vid eh, Alzheimer till exempel eller vid mild kognitiv svikt. Hur de här områdena minskar under sjukdomsprogressen. Och vi vet också att ett av de tidiga symptomen är att man tappar lokalsinnet. Att man får svårt att hitta rätt i en hem, hembarn miljö. Så att det finns mycket som tyder då på att det här symptomet vid Alzheimer eh, kommer sig av att det här systemet påverkas. Men det finns också andra tillstånd, så det här är inte bara Alzheimer utan vid Parkinsons sjukdomar, vid andra hjärnsjukdomar så, så kan man då få problem med de här eh, funktionerna. Man kan säga att det här är alltså ett grundforskningspris. Det är upptäckten av hur hjärnan eh, Hitta rätt, hur vi hittar rätt i tillvaron i rummet, i omgivningen. Eh, vi belönar inte upptäckter om någon specifik sjukdom. Men det här kommer säkert att komma till nytta när det gäller sjukdomar i hjärnan i framtiden. Fler frågor? Varsågod. I mikrofon där. Jag undrar hur vanligt systemet är bland andra arter än däggdjur. Till exempel påglar har ju bra lokalsinne. Har de såna här celler också? Ole. Can we do it in English? Yeah. In English. So the question is if other animals than rats have the system and if, 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 if it's similar to if, if birds use this system when they navigate? Well, that's the question. What has been shown is that uh, both grid, cell, grid cells and place cells are find, found in, in rodents, it's found in bats, it's found in monkeys, and now also shown in humans. So it seems to be a system that is in, in all mammals. Other vertebrates also have hippocampal-like and enterrhinal-like structures, so it might also be found in, in uh, fish. Whether it's exactly the, All the components of this is used in birds is not completely known. There are um, uh, magnetic fields that the uh, birds might use for their, um, for their navigation. But what is characteristic for this system is that it's, it's not dependent on one sensor input. It's a combination of many sensor input that creates the activity in the place cells and in the grid cells. 
Så man vet inte riktigt när det gäller fåglar, men fladdermöss i alla fall. Och råttor och människor och apor. Please. Där. Där. Så. I'm a freelance journalist for Channel Radio. Uh, my question is uh, this uh, discovery, uh, then what's the significance of that? Will it uh, indicate that uh, you can uh, um, find better, for example, hemorrhage and other diseases for the brain? No, uh, it, it, it's similar to the previous question we had in Swedish, but it's very clear that there are many processes in the brain and this is one function, one process which has been described. It's not describing the mechanisms of brain disorder. It's a consequence of a brain disorder. Uh, so you have a brain disorder, like you said, a hemorrhage or Alzheimer we took as an example. At, and that disease will disturb these circuits. So you will have an impaired function. So we are on a functional level and a neural circuit level, but not on disease mechanisms that we cannot. So again, a prize for a fundamental discovery of how the brain works, likely to give uh, important uh, results and inspiration for research about diseases in the future, but no immediate therapy based on this. More questions? Up there, please. The question is, are there gender differences in uh, the positioning system of the brain? Should you, uh, <laughs> Sensitive question here. I, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I think that, I don't even know, but I think that the experiments in rats were done in both male and female rats. Um, I think, is that what you're... Aiming at. <laughs> Hans has information here. <laughs> so, uh, so this is just, uh, we don't know about the, the particular the grid cells and the place cells, but we know about the sense of place and navigation, and there, yes, there is a gender difference in humans. Mm. One, one uh, half of us can navigate better than the other, if you look on an average. <laughs> okay, more questions? If not, I hope we have not completely satisfied your curiosity. And there will be opportunities for uh, um, those of you who have requested interviews to uh, speak to members of the Nobel Committee. Uh, and those of you who haven't should contact uh, Mrs. Dumanski here, who can help you find a, a, uh, a committee member to interview. Uh, we have some secrets over there. Uh, and here, X here means Torkel Klingberg, Y means Hans Forsberg, Z means Agneta Norberg, and XX happens to mean Ole Key. And I'll put it up here because I'm sure you have already forgotten it. Where do I put it? Here. So with that, let's close the formal part of the press conference and now we'll switch to interviews. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.